Hello everyone. In this session, we will continue the continue topics of the three phase induction motor. In the last session, we will discuss some conclusions of the induction motor rotor. Here, we will make the conclusion again. Look at here. If the load on the three phase induction motor is increases, so for example, we have a three phase induction motor. Three phase induction motor load means what is the three phase induction motor load? Three phase induction motor generates the speed. Speed means the mechanical load. If the mechanical load, if the mechanical load increases, then what happen? The both induced EMF as well as frequency both are increases. Both will be increases. So this load will decides the the increment of the load will creates some changes in the slip as well as the speed. So how it is? So to conclude this, here generally you know the mechanical load increases on any rotor. If the mechanical load is increases on any rotor, you know that the speed of that rotor will be decreases. This is the common factor for the any motor. Here also, so you know the ratio between the relation between the slip and the speed that is ns minus nr by ns. Here the speed will be decreases means the factor slip will be increases. Whenever the slip will be increases, the rotor frequency equal to slip times of stator frequency. Whenever the slip will be increases means the automatically the rotor frequency is increases. Same, what about induced EMF? Induced EMF E2 equal to slip times of induced EMF at, at standstill. Here the slip value is increases then automatically the induced EMF will also be increases. So that is the fact that when the load on the induction motor increases the induced EMF increases as well as the frequency increases as well as the frequency increases. Next the rotor resistance remains unchanged from standstill to running condition you know that it is independent of, independent of the induced frequencies in the rotor you know that rotor is always constant because rotor is not depends on the frequency not depends on the frequency these are the two important factors two important things to understand the three phase induction motor next topic this is equivalent circuit of rotor at standstill so whenever the rotor at standstill generally the rotor will develop some emf and the rotor has winding with some reactance rotor winding is represents like this that is the induced emf is represents with e2 naught and rotor has some resistance that is the r2 and rotor is the winding it has the leakage reactance x2 naught the rotor winding is shorted the rotor winding is shorted means so it will be short circuited it will be short circuited this is the induced emf in the rotor and winding consisting of the rotor resistance x2 naught is the rotor leakage reactance you know that again we will write here rotor induced emf for phase induced emf for phase next r2 rotor resistance rotor resistance and x2 naught here the rotor leakage reactance leakage reactance this is the simple equivalent circuit of the rotor whenever it in the standstill position next equivalent circuit of the rotor during the running condition so during the running condition means during the running condition also it will induce the emf the emf is represents with the e2 and during the running condition the winding has some resistance is nothing but the r2 during running condition the rotor has the leakage reactance that is the x2 it's look like a inductance look like a inductance so this is the rotor leakage sorry rotor equivalent circuit during the running condition this is the e2 and it will give r2 as well as x2 so generally you know the e2 value 
we have a relation that is a x s sorry x e to naught that is rotor induced emf will be equal to the s times of the rotor induced emf at the standstill condition and we can make another relation rotor resistance always constant but what about x2 x2 is s times of x2 naught s times of x2 naught from this we can write the current rotor current in the rotor induced emf current in the circuit is i2 the current value is like this that is e2 by r2 plus j s x2 not j s x2 not okay mm, generally it's look like a source but here the slip is there slip is varying with respect to speed so that's why we can manage this we can manage it constant source then the circuit is become like this so this variable source variable source why it is variable because it consisting of the slip e converted into the into the constant source we can convert into the constant source that is how we can convert in convert means just re removing the s removing the s means divide all the parameters with respect to the s yes. then the equivalent circuit is become like this the equivalent circuit is there is no change in this is the inductance and the circuit is like this this circuit is become e to not circuit is become the e to not and r2 will become r2 by s and it will become x to not it will become the x to not then the total current will be like this the total current i2 equal i will write again like this this is the e2 by e this is e to not now the e2 is become the e to not and this is r2 by s j times of x to not j times of x to not this is the modification of the this is the modification of the circuit equivalent circuit so we can write input power input power is like this we can assume the power entering into the rotor is like this that is the total power in the rotor we can write the resistance into current so this is the current into resistance then the power in the rotor i will write like this so i will write again the input power of the rotor value is current entering into the rotor is i2 resistance in the rotor that's why i will write the i2 square into r2 by s okay i can modify this r2 by s into two terms that is r2 by s i will modify like this that is r2 plus r2 into 1 by s minus 1 1 by s minus 1 so this is r2 generally r2 into 1 by s minus 1 is like this what is this so we can we can name it as like this that is electrical equipment we can name it as the electrical equipment this is resistance and slip are all are the electrical equipments only of mechanical load i will take it as a, it is a mechanical load because by varying the load slip will be varied load on the shaft so i will be modified like this okay how how it works if load increases if the load value is increased for example high power is required it required generally the high power is required okay to drive it to drive it right because load increases slip value increases this value decreases this value decreases and this value is overallly this value variable so generally if you observe this equation r2 is the constant value r2 is we can make it as fixed value 
but what about R2 into the remaining term 1 by S minus 1 this term is the variable term why it is variable it is consisting of the slip but R2 doesn't have any slip that's why it is the variable term so finally we can write is like this so we can name it as this is the rotor loss so that's why I will take this is fix this fixed value I can conclude this I2 square so I can conclude this so finally I will write one equation that equation is like this that equation is simply like this finally we will get the rotor the rotor input or R state R output state R output state R output is given to the rotor input or it is travel from the average sorry air gap power we can name it as the air gap power that value is like this this is three times of I2 square into R2 by S I2 square into R2 by S why 3 for the 3 phase it is for the 3 phase why it is because the input power is like I already write this it will take some power is like this that power is converted into two things one is the last power another one is the this power okay yeah and we can write again the rotor loss so just look at here R2 can be divided into two things so RT is fixed value I will write it is a rotor loss then I will conclude here the rotor loss is like this that is 3 I2 square R2 is the fixed value that is the rotor loss so finally I will write the equation is like this and again it is the rotor again it is the rotor yes so this is the R2 and this is the X2 you know that this is the R2 into 1 by S minus 1 just I modified this R2 by S is into two things one is R2 like this okay so generally we can name it as x2 naught or x2 anything is nothing is there the, the finally we can write this is the input and this is the this is the input of the rota input and this is the loss and what about x2 x2 value is generally less value x2 is less less why it is less because of frequency is less because of frequency is less generally we should eliminate it but we can better to put in the thing we can better to put in the thing so finally this is the input this is the loss and this is the output we can name it as the output so here the output value is like this therefore the rotor output is the rotor output value is like this the output value is 3 i2 square r2 into 1 by s minus 1 1 by s minus 1 understand so we can find out the three things this is the rotor input whenever this much of input is given to the rotor rotor we have some losses here after that loss rotor will generate the this power is here this power is here this power is called as rotor output and grazed power we can name it as the some grazed power some grazed power so these are about the rotor equivalent circuit of the rotor during the running condition okay I hope all of you understand the session. We will continue the this part, continue in the next session. Okay, thank you.